Hello everybody, welcome to this video. It's going to be very different from anything that you may have watched previously on this channel. It's going to be quite a serious topic that we are actually discussing today. And I have a great friend of mine with me. Uh, Elena, if you want to say hello to everybody. Hi guys. And we're going to be talking about an article that came out last month, the 8th of October 2020. And it's an article, as you can see on screen, regarding Twitch staff and the fact that this is ex staff, this is current staff across all of the eras across Twitch, even back when it was Justin.tv, and how they're calling out the company on sexual harassment, sexual assault, racism, misogyny, and everything across those different kind of discriminatory locations and and the reason that I wanted to discuss this because there may be a couple of people now saying well this is a very different from your usual content it, it's a case of this article is not being talked about enough across the entire industry and I think it is an, uh, a joke more than anything that it's not really being scrutinized and checked over and Twitch are not formally coming out and acknowledging the issues that have been put forward. And um, I, along with probably anybody else that has read this article, is absolutely disgusted from what I've read. And it, we really need to start setting a precedence here where we can't just allow these big, you know, internet platforms to continue working in this fashion without one giving us a good understanding of how they're improving their services, their business, their company, and two, actively just trying to sweep stuff under the rug. And that's exactly why I've brought Elena on as well um, to speak with me. We're going to be bouncing a lot of stuff off of each other. And sh her being in the industry as well, being a journalist within the industry, I absolutely value her opinion on anything to do with the gaming industry full stop, but, and especially kind of this and and what has really come to light in this article. For anybody who is interested, because we won't be hitting every single point of the article, it is a very long article, um, mm -hmm. I will leave the link of the article in the description below. So please go and have a read of it if you're interested in more past this video. And again, it's so, so important that not only does this kind of stuff get, keep getting talked about, but we as a community should not stand for it. So, uh, Elena and I have read it, and like I said, it's a very long article, but I think you can agree with me on this point that some of the stuff in here is just shocking. I'm not a fan. <laughs> let's, let's just put it that way. I'm not yeah. a fan. It, it's absolutely incredible. So, the format of this is I'm going to go through a couple of things actually on here to give you guys a good feel of what some of these you know twitch staff members or ex twitch staff members have actually said about the situation that they've been put in their family have been put in and you know the, the lack of support i think from the twitch team and especially their hr team you, you will hear a lot about their hr team you'll also hear a lot about twitch ceo emmett share emmett share has been the ceo now for quite some time and it's incredible to see just how the company has progressed with this level of misogyny, racism, and sexual assault across the platform. Before we start going into the article, is there anything in particular, Elena, that you wanna you want to say beforehand? No, nothing too particular. Just thank you for you know bringing me in and and trusting me with uh, with these talking with you it's uh definitely i i it's something i've seen myself um in different regards i've watched uh a lot of things on twitch unfold um and the me too movement is not something to be ignored like mm -hmm. at all like we need to we need to support especially not just the women that have to deal with this but everyone because it's not just women it's uh, people of different races it's transgenders it's everybody within the lgbtq community and plus excuse me uh community 
they um, they deserve just as much of this. It's it's it happens to any one of us. It could be anybody. Mm-hmm. And you're completely right. The all of the systemic issues surrounding everyone is a problem, and it's a problem that needs to be discussed thoroughly for change to happen. And you know what? 2020 is a, a good place for that. You know, we're moving in a really great place and, and not just um, in terms of this, you know, you're looking at fantastic movements in mental health. And I think this alongside that is a fantastic movement ahead for both mental health and for inclusion and equality. And they go hand in hand. If you if you look at reports of large scale you know, systemic racism sexism and everything across the last 50 years as it's become more and more of a you know a talking point i believe that mental health has also become more and more of a talking point because the both can go hand in hand and very very much are similar in that regard and i think oh yeah for sure i talk a lot about mental health in my streams i've got videos out there for mental health this is such a, a a large factor for people's mental health that this is something that we need to continue talking about and it needs to be at the forefront of our mind because it is it should no longer be acceptable and unfortunately in some locations it is still accepted uh, whilst in some locations that may be considered still an acceptable location or in Twitch's regard, they're saying that they're doing everything that they can to make sure that these situations are no longer accepted. The fact of the matter is, there were times where people felt as if they were untouchable. And people within the business, which this article does go into, they felt like higher ups were untouchable and they could essentially get away with anything. And um, yeah, I'm going to jump straight into it because it's really. It's just jaw-dropping some of this crap in here. Oh, yeah. We start off by saying that the CEO himself had posted a memo he sent to staff about the allegations on Twitter saying, essentially, we support people coming forward, commend their bravery in doing so, and know that there are many others who have not. Now, the biggest problem with this is you then have a lot of ex-staff and even current staff who then have explained their stories and given their stories forward, which actually goes completely against all of this, showing that not only for the last, you know, I think 11 years has there been such a high level of systemic racism, sexism, abuse and everything like that, that they're now moving in a direction where they're forced to bring out a memo like this. And a lot of their former staff have sat there and have gone, well, you didn't and that's a problem this person's story starting there's there's a lot of different stories across the entire article but they said i've been hesitant for years to share my story and the events that happened to me during my employment at twitch she said but with the recent events and their statement on twitter i feel compelled to share and speak against their blatant lies to create a safe community and that's something that we're going to really focus on and i think stuff like sexism misogyny racism abuse can create a an environment that is no longer safe and elena i'm pretty sure you can you know agree with me on on these fronts listening to these stories if you're ever in a situation like that yourself you would never feel safe no a hundred percent not you would you would sit there and every day um, actually, one woman in the article put a uh, put it out um, the best way. It's like being in an abusive relationship, and once you're out, you feel free. Like it's it's not it's not good for your mental health. It's not good. You go home. It's one of those things that you'd feel like you go home every day, and the energy is sucked out of you. And I I just. I don't, I I can't, I can't understand why, why it's allowed to happen. Why, why, I understand why people don't want to speak out is more what I'm thinking. Like, 
I understand why they don't feel okay to speak out. And it goes back to what you were going to say. Um, and we can probably touch on this later on, but the HR thing, like human relations is not human relations. It's company relations. It's, mm -hmm. it's how do we keep, how do we keep our CEOs in their spot? How do we keep the, the executives where they are without, you know, without crushing too many eggs at the same yeah. time? It's like, it's a matter of like, I can't, I can't go to HR because I don't feel like I'm hurt. I've, I've literally had this happen. Um, it goes, I, I was, um, I worked for one company and I would email them I would call them and this is like when when I went remote with them because I had to I couldn't afford to move they weren't going to pay for me to move which is fine but I straight up would email them and um, and would send them discord messages and would ask them what I needed to do for the day or can they teach me something is there some way I can get better if you don't like this because I would notice that things would be edited but no one would tell me and I would be like hey I'd like to know why this was edited. What can I do better? What didn't you like about what I'm doing? Because I was still so new in the industry at that time. Mm -hmm. I was a little baby in <laughs> terms of being able to do anything. And um, so I wanted to learn and grow and be with this company because I really enjoyed it. And then I realized, oh, <laughs> they, they don't. They don't want me. Mm -hmm. Like, they finally sent me an email saying that they were, quote, unquote, restructuring so they didn't need me anymore and so that was that was a little blow to the gut because i felt like i put my all into it and i can feel where these women are coming from where it's like they put their all into it and they just don't feel safe so they don't say anything and they don't feel like they're going to be heard in the first place mm -hmm. and uh, you you say that and i'm hovering just here over a quote um that says no one really took women seriously there and uh, this is the from the twitch article and you know and, and just as you proved there and we all know this this is not an issue relating to only twitch there are a lot of companies out there especially internet based groups companies and all of that stuff that really don't take women seriously in any way shape or form across every aspect of the business whether or not it's just a small decision to be made on a, a, an article that's been written or a part of the website to downright abuse being ignored by HR departments because, and I quote, HR departments were only there to field the complaints, not to support the members of staff. And I'm sorry, but I don't know how we can accept that from any company at all and you know you said that you've got first-hand experience of that and it's just not it's just not fair it's not right it's completely unprecedented and it's just downright hideously disgusting in my opinion yeah no like that the whole point of hr is for the employees to be able to make anonymous calls for things that are happening. Mm -hmm. If you can't even make that anonymous call of things that are happening and ex and like expect a change, then what's the point of the HR department? Just yeah. get rid of them, stop paying them. Exactly. You, you clearly don't believe in it. And, and what's interesting about this article is it's not just one individual's experience. Um, this paragraph here says, in the months since, we have spoken with 16 Twitch employees from every er era of the company dating back to when it was just in .tv. A few said they never saw anything of the sort in their time with the company. Most of them had stories confirming different aspects of the original employees' allegations. For all of you that don't know, before Twitch became Twitch, it was originally called Justin.tv and then essentially moved into Twitch.tv. Justin Wong being one of the vice presidents of the company at the time. And there is a very interesting story about Justin and his wife in this article. One that I think is not only shocking, but goes to prove exactly what the culture was like during the early years of Twitch. Thus, still being an issue later on down the line. But we'll get to that. Can, can I just point out one paragraph that's just a sentence long in this? 
um, that just states several women we spoke to said they expected some of this kind of treatment yeah. when they were hired. Yeah. The heck? Yeah. That is where that is that is one thing that we need to change, and it's not going to start with us two. And I understand that, but we can be a driving force for it as well. We should not be having any anyone saying that they expected some sort of treatment. Mm -hmm. Like any, no one should go into a company going with their head down, going, "Yeah, no, I expect that I'm going to be, you know, abused or looked over or treated poorly." Like that is a problem with society. Yes. Like that is just straight up a problem that's still going on, and not just. And not just Twitch, in multiple different kinds of, like, jobs. Like, not just gaming. Like, it happens in politics. It happens in, like, heck, it happens in retail and construction sites. Like, yep. how, many, how many of the women, let me put it this way, how many of the women do you see out doing, like, road construction are actually the ones doing it? Most of the women are just sitting there with the signs, are they not? Yep. And that, like, that's a problem. <laughs> it is a problem. It's a huge systemic problem across the world. The fact that these women have sat there and admitted that they were expecting sexism, they were expecting, you know, sexual advances or sexual abuse coming into the company. How is that acceptable for any employer in the world? That is absolutely unacceptable to have a preconceived notion for people going into a business that there's a very good chance that they will be abused, whether that's physically or mentally, and in some cases, both. In a lot of cases, both, by the sounds of it. How, how can we, as a society, as a community of video gamers that hold, you know, that we're all on Twitch, how can we accept that as an issue? And... Regardless if people say, oh, they're doing stuff now to stop that, that's all well and good. But do we know the finite details of what Twitch are doing to improve this situation? Because it's to a point where they have to actually be explaining what their plan is. Because we, we cannot have this. This is absolutely unacceptable. I don't care if it was from 10 years ago. We need to know what Twitch are doing to stop these issues, to actually read these allegations and prove to the users that these situations are not happening anymore or the plan to stop them from happening. Because it's not just employees, it's also users on the website. Yep. And we will also get to that a little bit later down the road. But if anybody at any point thinks that it's acceptable and say, you know, oh, well, if they knew what they were getting into, they should have left. Or if they were in the company and they were being abused, they should have left. No, I don't care whatever anybody says. If you think that somebody should not join a company because of that or should leave a company because of that, then you're just victim blaming at that point. A company should be a place where you feel safe and if you don't feel safe going into it, that's not that person's fault. That's the company's fault. And they should be doing <laughs> everything to address that. I love this one thing that a woman said. Uh, she, she was told to continually work with the man who sexually assaulted her and yep. to show him respect. Yep. And someone who raised concern about the treatment of women at the company were told that if they don't feel safe, go somewhere else yep i'm sorry why 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 should i why 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 should i be punished or told to get out if i'm trying to make the mm -hmm. company better it's absolutely disgusting the hell <laughs> the, f the fact that this person was victim blamed for this because her i, I, I guess boss at the time sexually i think it's a physical sexual abuse as well mm -hmm. she then reported it and was told to basically leave the company and there are there are a lot of allegations in this article as well where there have been physical abuses like sexual abuses across the the years that twitch has been a thing 
and those individuals have actually been promoted after these and moved higher up into the company after these allegations not like immediately after but maybe a couple of months later down the line I actually think that one of the one of the things that was said was if you were part of the tech team yeah that you basically had free reign to do whatever yes. you wanted you, you were weren't you wouldn't be fired yeah you wouldn't be fired you wouldn't like from what i understand you wouldn't even get a slap on the wrist they just kind of ignore it and go on like yep. all right what what did that do that didn't teach anybody anything So from the point that you've just made there, I've managed to get to the untouchable section of the article. And the reason that I'm bringing it up now is we will move back on to the sexism and misogyny, but this is a very key point in that, into a point where employees at a certain level felt like they could do anything without consequence. And by the sounds of it, the employment staff or the, the staff within Twitch actually believed it so that these individuals were not held accountable in any way shape or form so there's quotes here saying it was just known that this group of people are the ones who were early in the company and they could do whatever they want so because these people were essentially at the start of twitch they felt as if they had a you know uh, i can do anything and get away with it mentality and it was so ingrained into the culture there that it actually fed down to every other employee in the company as well this next quote says, if they didn't get their way, they could just go to Kevin. And the next thing you know, you're having a very serious discussion about whatever the fuck it is. Kevin, I believe at the time was the CEO. The no, sorry, city the COO. COO. Yeah, um, until 2018. But he remains with the company in a culture, strategy and innovation role. How yep. ironic. <laughs> Another bit that I want to discuss and how the culture was, and again, this could very well be within the last couple of years, but there were people involved in this part of the incident and higher ups that were in the company at the time that are still in the company today. And that's why it's important that we don't just try to segregate the years and say, well, that was probably 10 years ago, because 10 years ago, people working in the company either doing these things or the higher ups in the company at the time are still employed at Twitch thus still you know ingrained into that culture that was first there and you cannot tell me that twitch are doing enough to actually change the culture because they've still got the same people employed that were doing some horrific things and letting people get away with some truly horrific things and some disgusting stuff involving fecal matter Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> this story grossed me out. Here, here I am. So, this section of the article called Lowering the Bar, and it's very important that we do talk about this because this is exactly the kind of culture that Twitch started on top of. And like I said, there are a lot of people that are still employed that were employed back then in a higher up position. So like many startups and tech companies at the time, Twitch had an employment happy hour, sorry, an employee happy hour. Unlike many startups and tech companies, the company had an open bar at its 225 Bush Street offices in San Francisco. So that, I mean, that's not uncommon. For smaller businesses, you can have that kind of camaraderie with people and it being a smaller business, you could have those situations where you would hang out and you would have drinks and, and all of that stuff. That's not uncommon, but <laughs> the story kind of unwinds. So they say every Friday after the weekly all hands meeting, employees would begin their weekend milling about the office with free beer, wine and hard liquor, playing games and socializing. Again, not uncommon for small businesses. The problem was that Friday evening socializing stretched into Friday night. Then people would spend their weekends relaxing, gaming and drinking at the office. Then they would bring their friends to do the same. So a lot of people weren't differentiating themselves from their workplace to essentially their home. And a lot of people were spending all weekend in the office playing games and stuff like that. For me, a company of that kind of large scale, that's too comfortable. And I think there and then that can breed a high level of just unprofessionalism across the working week which again, I understand because it's a small business that 
this may have been acceptable to start with. What follows it after they stopped it is completely unacceptable. So the, com the company decided that was an abuse of what had been intended so it shut the bar down, locked up the alcohol and had bartenders come in to serve the drinks. Cut off inebriated people and lock it up again each Friday night. This apparently did not sit well with everyone. In fact, and this is a quote, somebody had such an issue with that that they defecated and spread it all over the walls, one employee said. I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. Somebody was so upset with the fact that they were cut off of the alcohol because it was getting obviously out of hand that they defecated and then spread their fecal matter all over the walls. It gets better. This individual was caught on video entering the men's room and there was a big debate about how to handle it, which a lot of us thought was kind of odd, that there would be any debate between therapy and firing him. I mean, is that not the way that it should have come down? A former HR employee said the individual was not fired. Yeah. Yeah, it's like... It's just... It, to me, it just brings the question of why. It, I just... I cannot believe it. They had hard evidence that it was this person because they actually caught him on camera during yep. the during the time. They had a HR team at the time and this person remained working at the company after he took a shit and spread it all across the walls because he was upset that the bar was being locked down and actually mediated as it should have been. I just don't understand the immaturity to that and why why people why why twitch just let it happen like I, I, I can't believe it the, the the following quote after this is in any other or any other organization that's your ticket out yeah if you if you shit on the walls yeah. you're gone <laughs> they said you're just not staying but at twitch if they're in a tech role they're not getting fired now, if an individual does not get fired after spreading their fecal matter on the walls of the company, surely that person then believes they can get away with absolutely everything. And everyone around them, one little thing, they could be, I don't know, having a sit down with their manager and having quite a big discussion. And then suddenly their manager will say, you know, this kind of behaviour is unacceptable. What do you mean this kind of behaviour is unacceptable? John shit all over the walls last week. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it's just not... I, I can't believe when I was reading this what I was reading. I just... And... I, I, I'm appalled. And maybe this is movie logic. But in my brain, my thought is there's no boundaries. So no. therefore, like, they would cover up a murder if it happened on their freaking doorstep. Again, interesting you say that because the talk of sui live suicide on Twitch and people dying whilst live streaming was something that they very much wanted to sweep under the rug which they explain in this article, but I'm not going to go into that. No, that should video. be a whole other video. <laughs> that should be. Um, but yeah, that in this article, they actually do discuss suicide on the platform, death on the platform, and how that was such a high priority to remove that content for them. So moving back on to the, the start of where we were, the misogyny, the sexual harassment, and everything along those lines, there's a lot of ex-employees that are women that say stuff like here it was a boys club there was a definite bias a definite sense that females and males were different and females weren't given the same opportunities followed up with they were prey the fact that an employee has had to say this about a company that they worked for was absolutely disgusting also it's something to note across this article that they have not discussed 
at what point they worked at Twitch because they do not want to be identified at any given time, which is completely understandable as I'm pretty sure within some working contracts they could they could heavily be sued if they give that much information or even just a witch hunt from from people online. So it's completely understandable that these individuals want to keep it all as private as possible whilst sharing their story. Um, and yeah, I guess that you can also question the integrity of these stories, but the fact that so many women especially are explaining essentially the same abuse and people are verifying the stories just goes to show that even if the integrity is quite low and everything may be blown out of proportion, it's completely regardless there is still a high level of systemic sexism, racism, abuse that went on in the company over its 11 year span. So yeah, don't even at me on that. I won't accept it. Here's, here's another good point. And, and this time it's not staff. This is very focused on people actually on the platform, specifically women on the platform. So the women on the platform were held to extreme standards and it was always blamed on them if they used sexuality as marketing and it is it was deeply degrading and i think twitch as a platform started running it in a way that they would always blame the streamer they would always blame the victim on this point and we'll get to that when we discuss the racism sections of this article and i think you and i had quite a big discussion on this very topic mm -hmm. as well um yep and it is an incredibly important topic to discuss for sure i feel like early twitch there was a lot of rules against women streamers that if you looked on the other aspects and the other spectrum male streamers were getting away with probably a hell of a lot more at the time and there were quite a lot of issues across the platform especially for women and i think a lot of people believe that it's easy to be a woman on Twitch, on YouTube, on the internet in general. And I don't have that experience, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not a woman, so I wouldn't know how to have that experience. Uh, but Elena, I know that you've had some experiences where you've been told that you'll grow faster if you, you know, show more cleavage and, and just really disgusting and horrible things like that. Yeah, I literally had a guy, um, this is when I was really early streaming, so, like, I never saved the VOD to this one or anything, but this is this was, like, early days. I had some dude, and I think it was, I, I want to say it was just some random guy. I don't think, I don't think it was someone that I was friends with that was making a joke. Because I have had friends make jokes like that to me, because we we pick on each other, so that's what we do, like, you know, but we, uh, cause I, I think I told him the same thing right back, we were making jokes about how he was a bigger dude, and I'm like, you know, you could show more cleavage too, but this guy walked in, like, random, random viewer came into my, um, channel, and literally told me, while I was streaming, you'd get more views if you showed your tits, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, Maybe not in those same words, but that was basically the energy. Like, like I said, this was years ago, so I don't really remember the actual word, wording uh, that he put. But it disgusts me because, like, I look like ammunition is someone that I look to as, like, I would say, one of my favorite streamers. I like, I don't watch her all the time. It's I barely have time to even watch your stream <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I I try to catch her when I can and she's always been one of my favorite streamers because I like the way she does her content for one thing I think she's a really good player damn she's got some skill but like she isn't she isn't one of those ones that feels the need to you know dress in a I guess in a way that could be considered inappropriate or like revealing it like for me like I I take I take pride in who I am and I'm proud of my body, but I don't feel the need to show it. And mm -hmm. the worst part is, is that, and I've told you this before, it is concerning to me that there are women out there who think that, oh, I've got to dress a certain way. I've got to act a certain way. And mm -hmm. that's how I have to be to get used because I have to be 
the transcensional or whatever, uh, maybe edit that word out, but I have to be, I have to be the one, the, um, the e-girl, mm -hmm. as they like to put it. Um, I have to be the one who is out there showing off, being cutesy, having my hair all long and pretty, being like the the typical guy's girlfriend, like, you know, yeah. and that really bothers me. Like, there's no, it feels like as a female streamer that it's hard starting out to be yourself. And I, I don't think that that's something that guys have to deal with as much because most of the time, like, they don't care about your personality. They're, if they come in and talk shit to you, it's most likely because you're doing bad in the game. Mm hmm like and that's the part that bothers me it's like i don't and i'm not saying that guys don't get abused that it that doesn't happen because male abuse is just as common it's just not talked about as much mm -hmm. um because females tend to get swept under the rug uh whereas guys guys have been as a society in my opinion the way it seems to be is guys will just duke it out and that's the end of the abuse but like they don't talk about how it how it happens to them like what it what mentally it does to them yeah. whereas women we keep it in we don't talk to anyone about it because we're scared that we're just going to be seen as crybabies or mm -hmm. you know we need thicker skin yeah. and that's really what it feels like and i think um going off your point because it is a, an absolutely brilliant point and it's something that we all really need to consider is that right now where we are we are in the best place we have ever been as a society in which we're starting to really focus on these issues mm -hmm. men being men oh you're not allowed to cry you can't show emotion all that stuff that is being squashed and women are being you know they're feeling more empowered to not just open up about their experiences but to no longer take that kind of shit and it yeah it's something that I'm I'm happy I see is moving in the right direction, but if we don't keep momentum up with it, it can easily just disappear. And it has done with many things across the years, with with the likes of misogyny, with sexual abuse, with racism, and everything along those lines. And and I completely agree with you. Right now, people believe that the best way a woman can make it on a platform is to act in a very specific way and have to do it from a sexual point of view and I'm um, no in no way shape or form I've always been under the impression and I will remain under the impression that content is king if you have quality content and you're a fantastic marketer you will be extremely successful this is for all women out there you do not have to use your sexuality to become successful at all not at all and the fact that a lot of people women men and just a lot of people across all aspects of life believe that that is the only way for women to succeed don't get me wrong it's a strong way and a lot of women are very successful off of their you know sexual marketing you've got only fans and all you know all of that stuff across different platforms and it is something that is, of course, sold. But um, it is not the only way to be successful. And I feel like, especially on Twitch, YouTube, content creation, and all of that fantastic stuff, a lot of people have it ingrained, as to your experience, Elena, that if somebody is not dressed in a provocative way, they're not going to be successful. Thus then continues breeding that mentality down. And I think that has started from the ground up from Twitch in the way that they've responded to women on the platform to then it just be ingrained within their culture to a point where at 2020, we are still saying those words or we're still hearing those words. And that's why this video is so important. We need everybody to understand like i the thing the thing that points out to me um is in this article twitch like executives considered those women to be known as boob streamers yeah like 
that term is so disgusting. Yeah. Like it's it puts down it it puts those women down to a place where in my opinion that means they're less than dirt. That mm -hmm. means that they're less than what they actually are worth. Yeah. And that's that's a big problem. Like we it shouldn't is. think of it that way. We should think of the underlying root of why we think that way. Mm -hmm. It's it it all comes to mentality versus versus the one person. Like if you think that way, then you have to put yourself in check in mm -hmm. like your brain. Like there's a there's something wrong with you if that's your immediate thought. And and they do they touch on this really well within this article. Um, they give the example of Casey Tron. Um, Casey Tron being a professional streamer, they use her as an example, saying that. There was an abundance of concern when she started becoming popular on Twitch while wearing low-cut tops. Followed up by, it was one of those rare moments where some of these guys just came out with it and they were honest. This woman is the problem because she's showing too much cleavage and we need to come up with a way that does not bend our rules but allows us to get rid, get her off this website, sorry. I just, I don't understand how this situation is seen as a threat at the time. And it's still... It's been ingrained into the culture so much that you, anybody who's on Twitch would have at some point heard the term booby streamers or boob streamers, which you mentioned earlier, Elena. And, and they go into this in a little bit more detail as well. And it completely backs up your point of a lot of these women that are kind of up there in the top 0.0007% of Twitch are there on their own merit, are there on their content, are there because they produce quality content degrading them to the fact that they show a bit of cleavage and that's the only reason that they are there completely destroys their huge long list of fantastic content that they've created over the time and that in and of itself is complete and utter misogyny and i don't care what anyone says about it it is those those women are there because they have marketed themselves fantastically. They've done a great job at providing that content and people stay there. People may, and you can't just degrade them because they're showing a bit of cleavage because that's not how they became popular. They became popular on their own merit. And I think this next part of this article kind of really shows that. It, it says, women streamers' concerns were not taken seriously. One early employee said, there was never any talk about should we make a formal system or tools of any kind to help them manage their constant harassment. There was an attitude in the office, especially among the partnerships teams of what do booby streamers expect? This is going on from the level of harassment that women were getting on the platform. And this is the classic sexual harassment or in some cases rape cases in which the, the judge had turned around and said, well, she was wearing provocative clothing, so she was asking for it. That, that oh, that statement really grinds at me. It bothers me oh, so much. It's, oh, it's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. Not offering assistance to women for harassment on your platform and not banning people because... And this is the statement, what do boob streamers expect? No, that is a completely unacceptable response. And granted, this might have been a quote from five, six years ago, even before the takeover from Amazon. Regardless, it is so ingrained into the culture of Twitch at the moment that people, viewers, still believe that culture and it is absolutely disgusting and it's a culture that we need to change and fast because it's still rampant at the moment anyway i could talk about this point for absolutely hours it was, i was getting a bit um passionate about that just then it, it, hey i completely understand it, uh, just that <laughs> the well look at what she's wearing is just 
an absolutely disgusting excuse to you know like counter excuse for harassment and it pisses me off so much anyway let's move on before i start throwing things and start shouting <laughs> agreed agreed let's go <laughs> um so there's been a lot of mentions in the article about multiple women saying that they have been sexually assaulted by men at the company um this quote here includes forced kisses groping and inappropriate massages one described suffering verbal assault that was extremely inappropriate, abusive, degrading and cruel. And this was ingrained in their culture to a point where, as you said at the start, Elena, women were expecting this going in. Unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Uh, several women we spoke to said they expected this kind of treatment when they were hired, but were still surprised at the extent of it. And, and I think that's another key point. These women were going into the business with an expectation that this was going to be a problem, but then were surprised about the extent of the problem. The problem was so much so that women actually going into the business with the expectation that this was going to happen were stunned at just how much it was happening and how bad and uh, like the over the top scale it was happening as well. Yeah, the to go back to the um, the parties that um that mm -hmm. you spoke about like the like some of them called them the celebration of excess where um they've got to throw ragers and everybody's got to have free alcohol and party and like the thing that irritates me is when i uh when i read in the middle of that that one woman who worked at twitch said she dreaded the parties particularly because they were so commonly the settings for harassment and abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, when we, when people were at work, it seems as if everyone was on, she said. Everyone had a common goal, and in those moments, that's when it felt good. It felt like everyone had the same goal to make things happen and make it good for everybody to make the company work. But the times when I saw it get out of control were always those events. You kn you just knew getting ready for the night that something was going to happen. Watch out for so and so. Shit like that. You just knew it was going to happen. What the fuck? Yeah, it's not right. And I think <laughs> I think this is a lot closer to today's date as well. So um, if we take the timeline kind of going forward, the level of misogyny, sexism, sexual assaults, and everything was rampant in the early years of Twitch. Uh, the article does go on to say that multiple people that were there during the acquisition in which Amazon took them on said that Amazon was starting to employ more women and there was more of a sort of push for this kind of situation to stop happening, which is which is all well and good within the company itself. But during company events outside of working hours, this kind of behavior continued. TwitchCon was apparently one of the worst places to be for an employee of Twitch at the time because, as you said, Elena, the parties were as such that they needed to be excess. They had to throw the wildest parties and there was rampant sexual assaults that had gone on during these parties. Just going to show that they may have squashed it a little bit through the working day, but the culture is as such that people were still acting unacceptably outside of those working hours thus most probably still doing it but a, a lower scale inside working hours i think that information is actually a lot closer to today's date than many of us may believe yep and that's a problem you know it's it's bits like that that twitch really need to start coming out and saying what their plan is to reduce this and to stop this. There have been plenty of um, people on Twitter who also say, say like when um, Twitch had posted their uh, like statement saying that like sexual abuse is not going to be um, taken uh, lightly any longer or any things like that. Um, it's interesting to read the comments on some of those, um, like, there's obviously the people who are like, oh, thank you for, you know, saying this and speaking up and blah, blah, blah. And then there are people who are like, well, where's the plan? Like, yeah. what, stop giving us just words 
and give us a step-by-step plan of what you're planning to make it better. And I think you mm-hmm. mentioned this before we started recording that like they've said that they're going to double the funding for a yeah. certain department to help. Well, what does that mean? And like taking it in a hyperbolic way, but like you doubled a dollar, it's only two dollars. What's yeah. that going to do? What does the money mean? Like money means nothing. Like exactly. if you if you're spending it like a hundred thousand in a department and you bump it to two hundred thousand, is that money really gonna go to anything better? Or is that money or is that money just being said that they're gonna use it for something and it's just giving pay raises to those people instead? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we don't know what that money does. Telling us that money is being used doesn't mean anything. What no. is the money being used for? exactly and and i think that's that's a big problem with a lot of companies that um have allegations such as this and and publicly they're they're kind of pushed to the forefront they they say oh we're taking steps or oh we're adding more funding or oh we're doing this we're doing that that level of explanation is no longer good enough because you are bang on with that elena it's just just vague it's too vague, you know, yeah. and I understand that you may not want to make your policies public. Um, and I get that completely, but it's about time that actually you start putting out your plan. And it can be just as simple as we're updating our HR policies. We're going to be funding more in terms of self-help and therapy and we will be updating our policies about letting people go and, and all of that kind of stuff and, and how we're going to approach these on a case-to-case basis and how it's going to be, you know, a, a fantastic way of actually proving that you as company are trying to move forward and stop this is simply by hiring a third party to complete that work for you. Remove it from internal because the culture is so embedded internally that it's hard to change that culture when you've still got the same people at the top level that you've had there for 11 years. Yeah. Using an external facing company to investigate these individually will not only just show the world that you're taking it seriously, but it will actually provide results. And there is a section in this article where there was a third party investigation that came through and somebody was removed from office because of this third party investigation because of the findings. That goes to show that it works and you as a company should really be looking at that more if it works. I think for me that would be a fantastic route to take but these kind of things and this kind of cultural change does not happen from just one initiative. And throwing money at a problem does not make it go away. As we've seen multiple times across the last, well, hundreds of years, throwing money at a problem does not make the problem go away. Um, We're moving on to a statement which is very interesting and it's something that I mentioned earlier. Before we do that, though, this quote here is astonishing to me. So um, this was regarding HR. So HR weren't a source of support for employees. If anything, they just work to minimise the complaining person and their complaint. And it's something that we have already touched on this video, but that statement in and of itself is absolutely disgusting. You as an employee need to be able to go somewhere independently to report abuse or anything along those lines. The fact that people have gone out and said that they weren't a source for support for employees, but they were just minimising the complaining person and their complaint, essentially sweeping it under the rug, is unacceptable. But this next bit, I think, perfectly goes to show the kind of culture that was ingrained in the top brass at Twitch. So, as I said earlier, Twitch used to be called Justin.TV. That was actually named after Vice President Justin Wong who was married to Samantha Wong. Now, Samantha Wong, his wife, had actually experienced sexual harassment in the company. And I'm going to read you some of the quotes that were mentioned in this article. 
So the article, this section of the article starts off with, even senior executives could have trouble marshalling the company to care about harassment. In June, that's June 2020, okay? Samantha Wong and her husband, former Twitch VP Justin Wong, publicly questioned a Twitch statement about how seriously it takes sexual harassment. This was... This was the guy who the entire website was named after, right? He put... Sorry, no, she put, these are empty words considering you as a company minimised and dismissed my sexual harassment and continued to let the Predator attend your events and gave him live segments at E3 on your official channel. Justin then backed up Samantha's version of events saying, I was a VP at Twitch and I reported this to the relationship owning VP, the head of HR and the CEO. All assured me it would be handled. Next year he was in the same VIP space at the same Twitch event I was told he was the VP's uncle and an important initiative launch partner. So somebody who is that high up reported it to the relationship owning vice president or VP, the head of HR and the CEO, all of which they said to him, yeah, we'll sort it. And then this individual who sexually harassed his wife was in the same event in the same space as them not more than a year later, just because this predator, as he's mentioned in this statement, was one of the VP's uncle and was an important initiative launch partner, which just goes to show just how much Twitch values money over safety and support of their employees. I, I just can't believe it when reading this. I mean, how how unsafe must you feel as an employee, if somebody who was at the top level got completely ignored I about think, their sexual uh, harassment case. I, I think there's a quote. I think there's a quote in there that's actually pretty perfect uh, to respond to that question, whether hypothetical or not. Literally, they said if Justin couldn't get anything done, what hope is there for the employee? Yeah. I've got it just here. So the um, yeah. the entire quote is, what's disappointing about that from a female's perspective is if Justin couldn't get through, then there wasn't really any hope for any of us. It was extremely disheartening at the time to see nothing done about that. And that is correct in, in every way. And as you, you're right to point it out, because it the fact that this was accepted and the quote just before it, states that one of the former employees recalled the incident saying it was demoralizing to see the company not just tolerate abuse, but to continue promoting and aiding the abuser. Yeah, For no, that's fine. Nothing's wrong there. Nothing at all. No, everything's cool. Which is absolutely disgusting. So you can see where this other employee comes from. The fact that from a female's perspective, if Justin couldn't get through to these people, then there was not any hope for anybody else below that. To a point where this abuser was then promoted. Mm -hmm. not fired no investigation by the looks of it they were promoted again I don't care when this was this culture is still ingrained into this business whether or not it's changing slowly or anything along those lines you still have people at the top that were involved within this incident it hurts me yeah it's it's not this, this entire article it really does open eyes to the culture and that this is exactly why i'm saying they need to be more open and honest about the changes that they're making in their company culturally because it's not it's just not right and this is just sexual harassment misogyny and the abuse of female streamers and employees in twitch i've not even started on the racism section yet yeah, I was about to say, we haven't even gotten to the whole problem of diversity in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, um, there was a quote in here at the start of the what's essentially being labelled as the racist welcome section, which you can see on screen. And it starts with, Twitch has a woman problem, one employee told us. I don't know if there are enough people who would also see that Twitch has a racial and ethnic minority problem as well. Racism is such a touchy subject at the moment that a lot of people try to avoid it. 
thus not enough people talk about it and racism is absolutely unacceptable across everything in my opinion there is absolutely no need for it Mm -hmm. and some of the stuff that is said across the article regarding racism is just as shocking to me and just as disgusting so we've got it kind of at the top so historically the decision makers had been predominantly white and male so they have brushed off safety concerns of racial and ethnic minorities women and people from other unrepresented groups they said they have brushed off those concerns and said we are prioritizing product roadmaps this is where certain safety tools and safety interventions lie we're going to put those at the bottom because they're not important to us and they're not important to them because of their experience and taking their personal user experience as the universal user experience and they do they don't have voices at the table who say actually this is really important and i'm going to we're going to get to that point very shortly of twitch's lack of acknowledging racism across its platform there's an interesting quote here hate speech was dismissed as teenagers being edgy and thus not as serious it was almost like it was dismissed as not being real racism (laughs) this is the problem i think with a lot of companies coming this way and racism is such an issue across the entire world that people don't actually acknowledge that they're being racist at any given moment and there's too many people at the top that are brushing it off and just making excuses for sexual assaults for racism for anything like that and that is where it is completely unacceptable it's bothersome when you think that like they're dismissive of it if like a younger person makes a racist comment because Mm -hmm. when they dismiss it as edgy humor they dismiss all sorts of racism like that as edgy humor yep it's like when you go back and look at the early days of youtube when racist jokes were kind of the thing like am i proud i grew up in a in a time where like i would watch a youtube video as a kid and there would be a racist joke and i thought it was funny no because i grew because it it shows that we have grown as a society Mm -hmm. in my opinion like i don't think that like we should hold people accountable for past actions like that if they've changed we should hold them accountable if they haven't if that makes sense if there is no real change like there's a time period where like for me it would be like saying that hollywood not saying that there isn't racism and problems with hollywood there is but like when you look back at blackface yeah. And you look at that and go, why was that okay? Yeah. And then you look at the time, you go, oh, well, we've changed as a society. We don't do that anymore. We have. And in, in no way, shape or form do we condone the, um, you know, the actions of people back then either. I think the no. Black, no, Black no, no, Lives no. Matter movement is something that is extremely important at this stage. And it is finally being looked at as an issue probably not as much as it needs to be still and there's still a lot of work and you know being quiet about these kind of situations is unacceptable and that's why we're doing this video is to continue talking about these things and and starting to get into the notion that these situations are unacceptable and yeah what i was going to go back to was uh I, it it brings me like it 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 irks me when like I I read this article and they talk about how the decision makers have predominantly been white male 
Uh, and that's kind of, they've brushed off the, the concerns of race and minorities and, mm -hmm. and other uh, diversity groups. And the thing that bothers me is that what's happened is they've created, and it's probably changed with Amazon taking over to a degree. It's probably they've added more things here and there that they needed to. Um, but they but they created an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And that's where the issue comes from, is that like this this idea of there's no racial problem is because there's no to them there's no racial problem. So surely because they're saying there's no racial problem and they're and they're like other executives are echoing that there's no problem. There's no problem. Mm -hmm. What do you mean there's a problem? Everybody here tells me there's no problem. Therefore, echo chamber. Yeah. And that's an issue that needs to be addressed. Like the, the fact that like one former executive made repeated racist comments to an Asian woman on the team. Mm -hmm. Actually, a really good point that you do bring up that paragraph because it's definitely something that I want to focus on here. Um, the paragraph reads, one employee said racism was accepted within the company, recalling one former executive making repeated racist comments to an Asian woman on the team. Another early employee said people within the company had to fight for a year to get the N-word on the global ban list. Streamers for also... Year? For a year. <laughs> Streamers also were expected to moderate their own chats and could ban individuals from their channel. So it was not seen as the responsibility of the platform to police behaviour. That is completely unacceptable. I think that has been changed. It's been changed years, now. Though. Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely has. And there's been more of so, a focus on luckily. policing behavior, but it is not to the standard that it needs to be. And I will get onto that shortly as well. One person from Justin.tv days recalled an early meeting about establishing rules for the new gaming side of the business that would eventually grow to become Twitch. They knew gaming would need special rules because they didn't want, for example, someone streaming an M-rated game to get banned for showing pornography because of brief nudity in a cutscene. While logistical issues of that sort were focus of the meeting, the person recalls future Twitch CEO Cher, the current CEO of the company as of right now, insisting that Justin.tv needs to be a service that has no opinion, to the point where he insisted the Klu Klux Klan be allowed to stream as long as they adhere to the platform's rules. That is the current CEO of Twitch who said that. If anybody watching this video to this point wants to try and justify that please go ahead because that is absolutely disgusting twitch's representative emphasized that it is not a free speech platform noting it has rules banning hateful content language and behavior which it should have that response from share that should never have been in a board meeting or any form of meeting whatsoever it shouldn't have been, and it should have been placed a lot more. And that should have been the talking point. Not allowing people to just go ahead and, and it needs to be a service that has no opinion. No, unacceptable. So it follows up by saying, we have taken and continue to take aggressive action to curtail hate speech and harassment on Twitch, including issuing permanent bans, they said. That's all well and good, but in my opinion, as of today, the permanent banning system is not to a point where it needs to be in terms of reviews are taking too long, people are continuing to harass and because there is absolutely no top level authentication system, there is no stopping somebody from going onto a VPN and creating a completely new account and harassing the same person, which has happened a lot. I've had people that I consider really good friends that are streamers that have had consistent harassment from somebody just making new accounts constantly and there is absolutely no accountability from Twitch there and, and, and no sort of 
response to trying to keep people safe. And I'm going to go on again. This is to a, a point that I'll go on to very shortly. There were some shocking decisions made. So back in July, Twitch posted a video montage of streamers expressing support for Black Lives Matter and calling on people to lift black voices, which is a fantastic initiative and should be done. But pulled it after people pointed out the video was overwhelmingly white with only one line spoken by a black streamer. Don't get me wrong. I'm of the belief that we should all be talking about Black Lives Matter and we should all, as a society, be bringing that to the table and actually discussing that as much as possible. But you need to involve people that have experienced those issues. You're talking about a society that for generations now, media has been dominated by white people to then have the Black Lives Matter Voices video montage be specifically white people during it and not actually displaying those that have been affected by this, I think was not in any way, shape or form the right way to go about it. And they immediately took that down when people started complaining, which people should have. And I'm glad in this instance, Twitch took it down because they finally did something that they should have done. Reading, like going through this article, there's so much that they needed to do differently. Incident it, it follows on to say, incidentally, in the same week, the company edited a Pride celebration video after it claimed the G in LGBTQIA plus also stands for gamer. Why? I remember that, and I laughed so hard. <laughs> like it's just astonishing. So I. All right, I'm going to I'm going to play devil's advocate on this one just because as a person who like has studied a little about marketing, not saying it's good marketing, not saying to ever do it. <laughs> I understand though what they thought because yeah. they were trying to be inclusive and they were trying to say, "Hey, you know, these LGBTQ plus people are gamers too. Mm. Like, I get it. I understood. So like, it's it was such a poor decision, it but is. I understand what they were trying to do. I, yeah, I get, <laughs> I get what they were trying to do. It's just, you have- It was just bad. You have quality assurance people in a company, especially from a publicity perspective, to make sure that shit like that doesn't get through. Which just goes to show that I think their PR team really needs to be audited properly to allow the Black Lives Matter video and then the LGBTQIA plus video to actually go ahead in the same week. Their PR team really needs to be accountable for that and should not have let that kind of point kind of go out there. I understand what they try to do, but obviously, for obvious reasons, it rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way and kind of didn't really push the message across properly. They also go on to talk about the different things that have happened across Twitch in terms of <laughs> Twitch trying their best to be inclusive, but it's still not really working. And then an earlier on in Twitch's lifespan about an emote that caused a major issue. And we'll get onto that very shortly. So it says in this paragraph, more recently, it celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month in the US with a series of emotes modifiers that let people deck out their favorite emotes with sombreros or maracas. While people objected, Twitch said it clearly missed the mark and removed the modifiers. I mean, that's kind of pushing stereotypes, is it not? That's like saying, oh, because it's British History Month, we're going to give all your emotes a cup of tea. That's just not acceptable. <laughs> like No. I, I, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that, again, that managed to get through some sort of quality assurance system, which I don't think there is one at Twitch at all. But then we actually move on to a really serious issue with one of their emotes that they did. It, granted, it says several years ago, but again, this is something that was ingrained into that culture so much 
that it still needs to be addressed. And we can't have people believing that this is acceptable because it was several years ago. But, and, and this goes to show the community and how the culture of Twitch as an employer and its staff really bled kind of into the internet culture and did absolutely nothing to squash it down. So the company rolled out a global emote of a raccoon that was quickly seized upon by some users as a way to harass black people. In June 2020, former Twitch product manager Olivia Grace posted on Twitter that even though the emote was being blatantly widely used for racial harassment and the Twitch Black Guild employee group requested its removal, Cher declined to take it down. I can't even begin to tell you how absolutely unacceptable that is. While actual harassment could not conceive Twitch to pull the raccoon emote, we were told fear of harassment has been a key part of the platform's refusal to reintroduce a trans community tag, something that would be optional and has been requested by a group of trans streamers for years. I want to just go back on to the previous statement. So this post on Twitter from Olivia Grace apparently came out in June. She had said that it was blatantly widely used for racial harassment. And a lot of that is down to the viewership and the community being just, it's just absolutely disgusting. But we talk about the fact that Twitch wanted to move its culture into a good place. So it started to bring up what they're called, what they're calling guilds. Um, and the fact that the Twitch Black Guild employee group, employees of Twitch, requested its removal and the CEO declined to take it down. Somebody please explain to me how, in any way, shape or form, that is acceptable. It's like a, a child, right? So you have this child, you give him a toy. Say it's, a, I don't know, it's a Nerf, Nerf gun. Repeatedly shoots his sibling in the face. Tell him no, does it anyway. Tell him no again, does it anyway. Not doing anything, right? You take that freaking toy away. He doesn't deserve it. That's what Twitch should have done. Yes. Like, 100%. Like, why wouldn't you just remove it? You know what it's being used for. You know it's not what you intended it to use for. But because someone did it, just remove it. Yes. Like, just get rid of it. And that's that. Like, just because it wasn't your initial intention, you cannot continue letting users have access to that so that they can underlie their racial overtone onto it and start abusing people. And the fact that your own employee group that was would have been initially set up to empower people in the company had its request to decline from the CEO to take it down oh, is absolutely unacceptable in my eyes I it's just I, disgusting I, I, yeah I don't want to get into it because I could sit here and I could scream and shout about it because it is absolutely disgusting and you know I'm not somebody who is a member of that group of people and the fact that I'm as annoyed as I am reading it I can't even begin to think of the people that suffered that abuse on the platform. The yeah, people exactly. That are in that guild employee group who had that request denied. It must be absolutely devastating, and I can only, I can only empathise with those people because I have, I don't have that experience, so I, I can't be sympathetic to them. I can only be empathetic to them because it's not a situation that I've ever had to experience myself. And from the bottom of my heart, I've. I've so sorry to everybody involved in that situation that had that harassment and abuse over that whole amount of time. It's absolutely unacceptable and disgusting. And, you know, as, as viewers of channels, we do need to be better for sure. But as a company, Twitch needs to do all it can to protect these people. And that's going to move me nicely on to... An individual 
who a lot of you may or may not know and it's very focused around user safety and the individual that I'm going to discuss is an individual by the name of Sweet Anita. So for anybody who doesn't know who Sweet Anita is, she is a British streamer, YouTuber. Um, she suffers from Tourette syndrome and she is kind of well known across Twitch and across YouTube for being somebody who has Tourette syndrome and who is empowering people to speak out more, who's a public speaker and and everything along those lines. And her entire story is absolutely fantastic and she's she's a great entertainer. She's really, really enjoyable to watch. Twitch has absolutely no regard for the safety of its streamers and probably its employees as well. Well, obviously its employees. And I'm gonna explain Sweet Anita's story. There's a lot of other stories during this part of the article I think this is the one to really focus on at this stage. But you guys, if you're planning to read this, you need to have a look at all of these stories because some of them are absolutely horrific. But I'm specifically singling out this one because it is not just shocking, but life-threatening for this individual. Twitch streamer Sweet Anita has talked publicly about her difficulties getting Twitch to cooperate with police to stop her stalker. For people who don't know the backstory to this, Sweet Anita had a stalker for years. She says, who she says, had made death threats, moved minutes away from her home, followed her in public, and peeked into her home through the mail slot. Last November, November 2019, she tweeted that police detained the stalker while he had a knife on him. After he assaulted her and confessed to harassment, she said they released him with a warning. A warning. Just a warning. Yeah. Twitch throughout this and the police on top of this as well. This is absolutely unacceptable. The following paragraph says Sweet Anita had been in contact with Twitch over this individual, but the platform had apparently been unresponsive to the point where she eventually took her frustrations to Twitter in order to get a reply. In a recent video discussing a situation as well as the harassment and stalking influencers face regularly, she blamed her local police for not being willing to write up the minimal paperwork the platform would need to turn over user information. But she also stressed how Twitch's lax account creation standards facilitate this sort of abuse. Verified accounts would stop people making bots and spamming chat with doxing information inciting more stalking and more harassment online from other people, she said, suggesting the platform take steps like linking accounts to a phone number or restricting accounts until they have been shown to belong to legitimate users. At the moment, security measures like banning members who harass you in chat is completely ineffective because they can just use a VPN and make a whole new account, she explained. It then goes on about Twitch's unban request feature that allows people to plead their case for mercy to a streamer or alternatively for already banned users to direct yet another volley of harassment at their target. That request feature is a joke. I'm gonna breeze past that because that is a complete joke. What, the reason that I've, I've specified on Sweet Anita's story is it's not just online harassment. This individual that was stalking her, that the police failed to try and assist her, that Twitch was unresponsive and unhelpful to her, nearly put her life at risk. This person was caught after he assaulted her and confessed to harassment to have a knife on him in which he got released with just a warning. Again, I'm gonna to plead to anybody out there who thinks that they can justify any of what I've just read out there because all of that is a complete fucking joke. The police are there to serve and protect. Are you gonna tell me that Anita feels protected by any way, shape or form? Twitch have done absolutely nothing to assist her case in any way, shape or form. And she's absolutely right to sit there and call out their, their account creation because it is not properly focused. It, it does not restrict accounts. You can just create a new account from a VPN, which is a very easy thing to do. And there is no verification system. There's an option to verify it. So 
and as she eloquently puts, it incites more stalking and more harassment online. No one will ever convince me that at any point any of that was justified from the police, from Twitch, from the stalker, anything like that. And the thing that sucks is that you know she's not the first and you exactly. know she's not the last. Exactly. And that's why I kind of bring it up because this is a completely shocking story and this is not just one story. Across the entire world, this is happening to women everywhere and there needs to be more protection for that it's no good saying oh she deserved to be attacked because of what she was wearing no no that is absolutely disgusting and anybody who says that to me will get fucking stern talking to i can tell you that because that is unacceptable to cause any harm to a person because of the clothing that they're wearing the person that they are their gender, their race, their race, ethnicity, anything is unacceptable. And it's Eth honestly, it's not enough. Let's just blatantly say it. It's not enough for us just to say, do better. That's no, not enough not. anymore. It might have been enough years ago, but it's clearly not working. It's not doing anything. Just saying, be a better person doesn't mean anything. We need to start holding people accountable. We yes. need to start holding no matter who it is no matter what position they're in we just need to hold people accountable and say we're not going to take this mm -hmm. no you're completely right and i know that that seems a bit strange just me and elena sat here talking about it but this is a situation that if we don't continue talking about it we end up moving backwards and i implore anybody who's made it to this point in the video to not just blindly sit back and, and you know, not do anything about it. it. It's actually time to speak up, not just about your own experiences, but the experiences of others. And, you know, offering that support to somebody who you believe is, in fact, being discriminated against. Because it's not acceptable anymore. And what you just said is right. Like, I won't... I won't say that you need to fully speak up and, you know, if you're not comfortable, if when you're one of those people who aren't comfortable with, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with, with being a person to, to stand and on the, on the street with a sign or, you know, go and protest. I am, you know, I've done donations where I can to different places um, for like mental health and things like that because mental health is very important to me and all of this can ensue really bad mental health issues and like it's like if you're not comfortable with anything small donations are a big help just showing that to a streamer or to another person that you see on the platform it you don't realize that just saying I'm here with you on Twitter actually means something. Mm -hmm. Even if there's nothing you can do to really help them physically, just telling someone that you're there and that you're willing to, you know, be an ear, you know, you're standing with them, that if there's something that they need you to do that you can do, like that you're willing to help them, that means so much more mm -hmm. than just being an ostrich with its head in the sand. Yeah. Because at this point, there are too many of those. Yes, there are. And, you know, I I know that I, um, as a content creator, I like to be a little bit lighthearted and, and stuff along those lines. And, and I know it's a reason why a lot of people kind of watch YouTube, watch Twitch and, and all of that good stuff, because a lot of it is lighthearted. Um, a lot of it is lighthearted across the platform. I think the the problem is is that when stuff like this happens, there are not enough people across our industry that sit down and get serious about it. And there needs to be more. There needs to be more people that are much higher up than I am that have a sit down and actually say, you know, these are unacceptable. I will find it completely unacceptable at 
any level to see racism, sexism, anything along those lines across my chat or anything along those lines. I think it's widely unacceptable. And I think I expect that from everyone else towards me. If at any point somebody believes that I am not speaking proper and I am not doing something correctly, I want to know about it as soon as possible. Because nobody's perfect. People make mistakes. It's owning up to the mistakes and fixing the mistakes that really show you as a person. Because I guarantee everybody's made mistakes, especially when it comes to all of this. Hell, and I still do. <laughs> I make mistakes every day. And it's part of human nature. Thing. It is part of human nature, but it's how you react to those situations and how you improve post those situations that really make a difference and really matter. And this is where we come together as a community. This whole cancel culture is not a thing. It should not be a thing. We should be using people's fuck ups and past mistakes as an empowering tool to make sure that people do not use do not follow the same mistakes and that voices start getting heard across all platforms all content all media so guys thank you so much for watching this video i know it's been very serious and you know i've been very serious across this it's a subject that is extremely important to me and should be extremely important to everyone else across YouTube, Twitch. This kind of reporting and this kind of information, we can no longer tolerate it. And if you have made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching it. And I'm hoping that you, you know, just have a double take on a couple of things and, and just, you know, maybe question something that you've done before, question something you said, or, or you know, in a case of didn't question an individual at a time. and, and it's not a case of a call to action. It's something that we, as a society, and especially in my community, we need to continue thinking about. I think it's very, very important. Elena, thank you so much for doing this with me. I know it's an uncomfortable subject, and um, I think your experience and the fact that you're in the industry itself has been absolutely invaluable to this discussion and I'm so thankful that you agreed to do this with me. Thank you for having me. I, uh, I appreciate that, you know, I, uh, I could come in and, and talk on something that is really touchy and affects a lot of people. Like it, it's not just me, it's everyone. And it's, it's a big thing. And I, I appreciate being able to come in and do this. No, no problem. I'd have you back anytime, anytime at all, but Ooh. guys, I'm going to finish off there. Thank you all so much for watching. I keep on going live on Twitch every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. So I hope to see you guys there. But for now, I'm going to end the video. Have a great rest of your day. Much love. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you on the next one. Goodbye, guys.